Yo there guys, what is happening? Welcome back to another video here on uh, Nasha Vlogs. It's that time of year, the 2020 season, like theme park season and scare season has finished. Uh, it finished for me and quite a few others at the time of recording yesterday, the 1st of November. I'm currently recording this on the 2nd uh, and it's been released on the 3rd, so you're seeing it uh, two days after the season has ended. Whew, what a short season it was, uh, especially the scare season. The scare season felt so short this year. It was weird. Uh, there was a lot of things about not just the theme park season this year, but also the scare season, which just made it so freaking weird. Uh, I just want to give a big shout out to everyone who uh, has said hi to me this season. Considering the circumstances, guys, you've really made me feel happy during this time, so... Big up to all of you, legends, um, and I hope to see some of you over the winter season, as well as the whole new long season in 2021, which kicks off in March. Well, it's going to be a long uh, see <laughs> close season, especially with um, Boris in charge. Anyway, enough about politics. As you may know, every year I do... A video, as you can see on your in the title, it's the top ten scare attractions of 2020. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't do a lot of scare events this year, but I still managed to get a top ten. Just um, obviously, before we get into the top ten, I just want to say all everything on my list are just me personally. I know scare mazes and scare zones are subjective. There are some controversial um, things in this lineup, and I know a lot of you are not going to like it. Um, obviously, as we go through the list, if there's ones that were on the list last year, I will try and tell you uh, how far down the list they've moved since last year. I will try my best to do that. But um, yeah, I think it's time to kick straight in. So let's start off with number 10. At number 10 was the Swarm Invasion at Fort Park Fright Nights. Uh, so the Swarm Invasion was a new scare zone for this year over on the Swarm Island. This was the first time that um, there's ever been like a dedicated Swarm scare zone. Obviously you have had attractions over on Swarm Island before. Uh, you did have the Walking Dead Sanctum back then in 2017. So this is sort of the first year since then that Swarm Island has been incorporated into the event. Uh, those who watched my Fright Nights review from opening day, you may know, or you may remember, I did say that Swarm Invasion was the event's weakest link. Um, obviously, when I did it on opening day, I didn't like it at all. The difference between opening day's version and final day version, not much, to be frank. Hence why it's at the bottom of the list. Um, some of the changes, the audio felt a lot quieter on the final day. The actors, they'd, they warmed up to the roles, but they were spread out way too far. They moved one of the stages. So obviously, uh, at the start of the event, as you can see on your screen, you had this one stage in front of the Swarm shop, uh, which originally had, during construction, two billboard, three billboards there, the two weird writing, and then the end is here. Then it had one, and then on the final day, they brought the other two back. And then there was another stage down by uh, this one here, right down the back, saying, look to the sky. Uh, that was right down by the Swarm entrance. That was then moved to literally about 100, 200 metres away from the Swarm shop and wasn't used at all. Uh, they added a new smoke effect, new smoke machine. Um, to be honest, you could hear the Swarm. The Swarm was making more noise than the Scare Zone was. Don't get me wrong, the actors were brilliant. Uh, the people with the guns, uh, little fun fact, which I don't think I mentioned in my review at the start of the event, is those guns that the uh, sort of operatives have, 
those are actually uh, guns from Zombie Hunt. Uh, and Zombie Hunt does actually make uh, an appearance in Roots of Evil. We'll get onto that later on. But it was weird. At the start of the event, the, the swarm sort of operatives were interrogating people. On the last night, I felt like they gave up and they were just making like generic Fort Park zombie noises. And I just didn't understand it. I, I, I just didn't understand it whatsoever. I think if there's any uh, sort of big cast I need like any characters I really enjoyed seeing in this area were the conspiracy theorists. These guys were insane. I got a couple of good scares. Um, I think at one point on final day, I walked past Swarm Shop and there was like two of them hidden and jumped out at me. It was funny. I feel like the actors were spending more time on the queue line, trying to scare people in the queue line, than people walking around. So um, I'm going to say this now, I'd be more than happy if Swarm Invasion does not come back next year. If it is going to come back next year, it needs to be, I think this is one of those attractions that need a maze next year. I think really next year Swarm Invasion should be like a sort of a sanctum maze over on the corner um, on Swarm Island. But yeah, at number 10 was the Swarm Invasion. At number nine was Platform 15. So Platform 15 was one of two upcharge mazes at Fort Park this year. Uh, I got on final day two run-throughs on this. Obviously, I will be doing a separate uh, in-depth review on Platform 15 in the coming days. So uh, make sure you're subscribed to keep an eye out for that. But Platform 15, what can I say? before, uh, without even doing a review. Platform 15 had good expectations on me. I've had nearly flawless years with Platform 15. I've had so, so many good years at Platform over the last couple of years I've been doing the event. I've been going now, this year was my fourth Fright Night. And Platform was on a winning streak with me for the last three years. This year wasn't Platform's year. Hence why it's really low down in the list. Like, I'm not saying it was bad because it was an upcharge. I just had, the first run through was good. I had some good scares, but the second one was ruined. Uh, the, the reason why the second one was ruined is because no one was social distancing. And the show captain came in halfway through the run and started speaking to a load of actors whilst I'm walking past, and they broke character, and it ruined the whole second half of the experience. And I, just, after that, I just felt like, you know what, I just want to get out of this maze. I'm not happy with it. The changes they've made to it, mirror uh, reversing it. I'm going to be honest. I preferred it the other way around. Certain elements of it worked. Um, a lot of the scares that people had told me about, they weren't there. Uh, the actors were not using the huts. Those huts felt useless. And I hate that I have to be so negative about platform. I, I'm going to say this, if you did get a really good run for it, good for you. Um, unfortunately for me, I got a decent run through and a bad run through. Was platform worth the ten pound? The first one through, the first one through I had, I'd say it was worth seven pound. Second run through, I think I would have happily just paid five pounds. I think platform definitely isn't worth ten pound. And all I hope, if Paul Parker listening, I really hope we make this a free maze next year. Uh, but I've got a feeling this probably, if it does come back, I've got a feeling right. If Fort Park bring this back next year and it's still reversed, it's going to be an upcharge. I'm going to be honest, I don't think we're going to see Platform 15 return next year. Huge shame. Uh, to be honest, if Platform 15 doesn't return next year, I think it's had a good run. I think it's time for Platform to be replaced, I think, unfortunately. But yeah, at number nine was Platform 15. At number eight was Screamplex Cinema. So, Screenplex Cinema, if you remember me saying on, 
uh, during my review on opening day, I loved Screenplex this year. I thought it was the best year of Screenplex. And I think it opens the doors for definitely the director to continue being a part of the event. And Screenplex, uh, I didn't do it on the final day, unfortunately, because uh, I was restricted to time. And um, yeah, I think Screenplex should come back next year, especially with the inclusion of the director. It really did link in uh, the studio 13 from a few years ago. The, can I just say the actors that were involved in this were brilliant. Huge shout out to them. Huge shout out to show captain Alice. Uh, brilliant cast. Despite it being a small cast, I, I'm going to say this Screenplex was such an underrated attraction this year. And I just had this really weird idea that maybe we should get a Screenplex cinema maze or an extension to the director. I'm going to say this happily now. I don't think this is the last we've seen of the director. I do not think this is the last we've seen of him. I'm not joking. That's all I can say, really. I don't think the director's going anywhere too soon. I don't... I. Yeah, the director, I think he's here to stay for a little while longer. So yeah, number eight was Screenplex Cinema. At number seven was the Festival Arena. Now, I, once again, on uh, the final day, I didn't manage to catch the fire show, which I'm really annoyed at. But Festival Arena, I'm going to say this, it was such an underrated area. Uh, and I I would love to see Festival Arena return in this form next year. You know, the Festival Arena, it had an opening show. Uh, I managed to catch that on both my visits. The opening show is underrated. You know, they're sort of introducing all these different areas of the park. And it feels weird. Is Festival better than Big Top? I think Festival Arena is definitely better than Big Top Showtime from 2018. But I don't think it's better than the actual Big Top Maze. Um, yeah, first of all, Arena, such an underrated area. Such a beautiful area at night. The lighting, the audio. I feel like the audio got louder as the event went on. I remember on opening day, it wasn't too loud. But on final day, it was loud. Uh, the cast as well. Uh, big shout out to Tabitha. Renee, uh, just uh, Tyler, absolutely brilliant. Like, you guys made that area, and I really do hope Festival Arena comes back next year. Maybe in a bigger form. I just think it's brilliant. I absolutely love it. Festival Arena, such an underrated attraction this year at Fort Park Front Nights, and it's number seven on my top ten list. At number six is Terra at Amity High. High school sucks. So this is now the third year that the students of Amity High has taken over Stealth Plaza. If you remember when I did my review, I said I, wanted, I wasn't a huge fan and I don't see this as a scare zone. I take those words back from the final night. The actors were brilliant in it. I can't... I, that cast was... Brilliant. Honest to God. The costumes were good. The lighting. They added more lighting at the end of the event. Um, at the end of the event, there was like red lighting just outside uh, where the Ben and Jerry's is, which was Amity Fish and Chips. And the show, mixing Lycanthorpe High and Amity together, is brilliant. Like The whole cast in there is brilliant. I, I can't speak highly of Amity enough. Yes, it just misses out on the top five. Um... Just due to, I felt like the dance show was a bit less, it wasn't as regular as last year. And I think it worked better last year where it was like pretty much every hour. Whereas this, I think it was like every two hours. And it, it just, that's where it lacked, I think, because the show only went on for like 10 minutes. And then for like the next over an hour and 40 minutes, like for the next less than two hours, you've just got actors walking around and acting. And credit to Fort Park, um, 
they definitely need to. I, I'm happy for Amity High to return. To be honest, I'd love to see Amity High and Lycanthorpe High get their own maze, or maybe uh, Amity High versus Lycanthorpe maze, because obviously that's what the dance show mainly was, was um, the alphas and the vampires from Amity High going up against each other. So I'd love to see that sort of concept they started with this year expanded. The costumes are cute, I'll say that. Uh, the costumes were cute. And I absolutely loved it this year. So, yeah. <laughs> Number six was Tara at Amity High. High school sucks. At number five, now kicking off the top five, is The Howling of Lycan Fort High. As I said uh, in my review of opening day of Fright Nights, this was my least anticipated attraction. I thought it was good on opening day. This area was insane on the last day. Uh, the the actors were brilliant. They were really like they were really interactive. The soundtrack they were playing, the '80s soundtrack. There was a couple of songs I um, realised uh, that I noticed because um, a lot of them my mum used to play uh, on the stereo when I was younger, and some she still plays now. I'm going to say this: Lightning Four Pie was such another underrated area. Like the lighting, the smoke, the audio. The cast, shout out to Calvin. Like, I, I just can't speak more about um, Lycan Fort Pie. Honest to God, Lycan Fort Pie, like, as I said with uh, Amity High, this needs its own maze. Whether, whether next year we get a sort of Amity High versus Lycan Fort Pie maze, or even if we just get a two separate mazes to themselves, like an Amity High maze and a Lycanfort maze. It was good. I, I liked it. I can't speak enough. The costumes were brilliant. Once again, some of the costumes were really cute. And um, also, uh, on last night, there were uh, two flags, like Lycanfort flags behind the bus, uh, which were hard to see, but I'd love to see. Yeah, that's all I can say about Lycanfort High. It was such an underrated experience. And I really hope Fort Park expands on Lycan Fort Pie next year. So yeah, number five was uh, Howling of Lycan Fort Pie. Go Alphas. At number four was Roots of Evil. Roots of Evil uh, is the second upcharge maze at uh, Fort Park Fright Nights this year. Cost £10. Uh, this replaced uh, Blair Witch from last year. I went into this with no expectations because I'd heard mixed things about it. And it did impress me. It exceeded my expectations. Is it better than Blair Witch? I think so. And I'll say this, the scares compared to Platform 15, I will, considering this was the same price as Platform 15, this was the better maze in my opinion. I know when I told people this on the night, people thought I were crazy. But it was, in my opinion, it was better. Like, yes, Platform at times had some consistent scares. This was scares swam as soon as you entered the building. The pre-show was good. The theming was good on the indoor sections. Uh, yes, there was certain elements. You could tell that it was Blair Witch before uh, with some of the huts. Now, one of the things which was interesting for me was going into the pre-show, I had told that the screen was there, but they weren't using it. When I went in, they were using it now and there was like a communication feed, which kept going off and it looked brilliant. Like Roots of Evil was such a good maze. Uh, I do actually have an audio recording of my reactions inside it, uh, which will hopefully be coming out in a few weeks. Uh, well, in a few days, so a couple of weeks. Um, there was like props from containment, zombie hunt, there was um, a bit of scenery from living nightmare in there as well. And yeah, it, it was it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, I'd love to see um, I'd love to see Roots of Evil expanded next year. Uh, big shout out to some of the card members, shout out to Sophie. Um, Absolutely brilliant, guys. Like, honest to God, 
roots of evil, such a good maze. Was it worth £10? Yeah, I will say that now. Roots of Evil was definitely worth £10. Um, platform was worth maybe a fiver. This was definitely worth the £10. And honestly, if I could do it more, I would have done Roots of Evil more. But yeah, at number four was Roots of Evil. At number three was Creek Freaks Unchained, the new outdoor scare zone in Old Town at Fort Park Fright Nights. I went into this with high expectations. On opening day, this was one of the most insane scare experiences I've done. Last night, I had some really insane encounters. The cast in here were absolutely brilliant. A couple of honorable mention, uh, mentions, Sam Scott, Brandon, uh, Sarah, James, mainly James, like, James, if you're watching this, this was your maze. This was your scare zone, dude. Uh, the buckwheats this year were insane. Uh, especially the last night. Uh, the last night, a lot of buckwheats kept calling me uh, mini buckwheat because for Halloween, I dressed up as um, a buckwheat. So uh, a lot of the actors saw that and kept calling me mini buckwheat. Um, and it was brilliant. Like the whole cast in there. On the final night, one of the encounters I had was those who have done uh, Creek Freaks this year. You may know in um, Old Town where it exits, there's like these free drinks machines that are normally there anyway. And in these drink machines, there's normally three of them there. When I went through, obviously they, they removed two. The, the drink machines are actually right next to uh, where the actual sawmill building is. So, um, yeah, so I went up to these drink machines and shout out to Sam Scott again. Uh, he, he sort of walked towards me, ushered me into the empty drinks machine. The what there's, as I said, there was three. Two of them were still there. One of them had been removed. Um, I, got, I got sort of ushered in there and then the chainsaw revved up. And I was trapped in there. I was literally locked in a in like a container, pretty much. That's what I was. I was locked in there. Uh, they started revving the chainsaw. I it stunk of fumes in there, um, and I, I couldn't do anything. You know, I could not do anything. I could not run. I could not do anything. It was insane. It was loud. There was an act of banging on the side of it, like kicking it, and it was mad. It was one, of, and it was my last run through on it as well. So it was absolutely insane. I just can't say which version of Creek Freak was better. Was was Creek Freak Massacre better or Creek Freaks Unchained? For me, I think they were just as good, and it really captured the intensity that Creek Freak Massacre had last year. And I, as I said with the director, this is in the end of the buckwheats. I don't think we're, this isn't the last of the buckwheats. But yeah, at number three was Creek Freaks Unchained. At number two, just missing out on the top spot is where, where the crows goes, nobody knows. Of course, it's the crows, the new roaming team at Fort Park Front Nights for this year. I said this on opening day, the crows were terrifying. And on the last day, the crows had definitely settled in. They were now jumping out of bushes. Yes, there was crosses around the park, but they were not using those crosses. They were using the bushes. And oh my God, some of the encounters I had with these guys on the last day was insane. Uh, shout out to Darcy. Shout out to Alex. Mad. Uh, one of them, uh, one of the first encounters of them was down by Flying Fish. Uh, I do have a couple of videos coming out from that encounter, so keep an eye out for that. So uh, <laughs> I had two different encounters down there. The first one, I was walking down filming. I got attacked. Uh, one of them, one of them jump scared me, and then another one jump scared me, and then one of them chased me all the way down into the queue of flying fish. And then after that, I sort of then <laughs> went out the little area they were in which was a little halfway between Flying Fish and Swarm. I then started walking up. I then got jump scared by one of them behind me. 
another one to my right, and then one of them jumped out the bush near the beach to my left, and it was insane. And all of them had the masks on. It was, oh my god, like the crows were insane. Um, and then the second encounter I got from them was down on the um, uh, Nemesis Inferno Plaza, where uh, one of them sort of chased me around down towards Rumba Rapids, where another one then jumped out, chased me back, and then I got cornered in between the queue line and the Nemesis Inferno drinks hut, which was insane, and I just got locked there. Like, they would not let me leave for about five minutes. It was insane. Like, honest to God. And then after that, uh, they sort of chased me down towards first of all. And then I go over to Creek Freaks, and they invaded. They, the crows invaded Creek Freak, uh, uh, where one uh, shouted to Ben Bristow, who then shouted, Buckwheat's killed those crows, and about four chainsaws came in. It was insane. Like, the crows, I, I said this before, and I will say it again, and a lot of people will agree with me. The crows must have their own maze next year. They honestly do. I want to see the crows really expand, and I really do think after those encounters that I had with them on the last day, they need their own maze. So I'm really excited, and I really hope the crows get their own maze next year. But yeah, and number two, missing out on the top spot. Where the crows know, where the crows go, nobody knows. Of course, it was the crows. And taking the number one spot this year, once again, it's Creepy Caves, but this year, Creepy Caves Resurgence. Um, last year, uh, Creepy Caves Unearthed, uh, no, sorry, Creepy Caves After Dark, was the number one maze of 2019. This year, Creepy Caves Resurgence was the number one maze of 2020. Um, subspecies Resurgence uh, is Creepy Caves now reversed. It was insane. The actors in there was absolutely crazy. It was loud. It was smoky. It was genuinely terrifying and was the most terrifying year of Creepy Caves ever. Like, big up to Chesington for creating that attraction. I'm going to say this now. If Creepy Caves doesn't return next year, they're sending it out on a bang. Quite literally. The fact that it has pyrotechnics in it, I really hope uh, Chesington do expand on pyrotechnics within scare attractions. Or just in general, I'd love to see pyrotechnics used in scare attractions a lot more. Obviously, uh, this year you had, first of all, and Platform 15 with Pyrotechnics at Fort Park. And then this year you had uh, Chessington's Creepy Caves Resurgence and like one of the trees in Wild Asia with Pyrotechnics. And I hope Merlin expand on it or other scare events expand on uh, using Pyrotechnics because it's quite a cool sign. It's great for photographers. But yes, that is my top 10 scare attractions of 2020. Guys, let me know what your top 10 are this year if you manage to do so. I know some of you didn't manage to do scare events this year, but guys, that was insane. It's been an insane scare season this year and roll on scare season 2021, where hopefully we'll get uh, a longer season. Uh, and obviously next year's Fort Park's 20th anniversary for Fright Nights. So I'm intrigued to see what we will have for the 20th anniversary of Fright Nights. Anyway, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you do subscribe because we are now 28 away from 400. And I'd love to hit 400 by the end of um, 2020 or by the start of the 2021 season in March. Anyway, guys, I'm going to get out of it. Like, comment, and subscribe. I've been Nasha. This has been another video on Nasha Vlogs. I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe, guys, during lockdown. Peace out.